In this corner, the DC Multiverse DC Rebirth Superman. And in this corner, the DC Multiverse Superman from Batman The Dark Knight Returns. They're swole, they're ugly, and they're on shelves right now. But which one is a better bang for your buck? Stick around and find out. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today, we're doing something a little bit different and pitting two different action figures against each other. Starting off the packaging, and Rebirth comes in a typical single-carded DC Multiverse window box. UPC for those who want it, and a product shot on the back. I'm assuming that this is a composited image, and if so, they did a pretty good job of matching the lighting to the background. Shifting over to our Challenger, and the Dark Knight Returns Superman comes in an extra-wide Build-A-Box. As we can see down here, we're collecting to build a horse, and the UPC for those who want it. And on the back, we get a wonderful product shot of Batman on the horse? When I saw this in the store, I did a double take. I legit flipped it around to make sure I had the right one. Regardless of how you feel about this figure, it at least shows you what you're supposed to be getting. That way, when you see this in the package, you at least know that, for whatever reason, it was intentional. For packaging, round one goes to Rebirth. Moving on to presentation, and fighter number one stands at 7 inches and weighs in at 5.5 ounces. Fighter number two stands at a staggering 7 and a quarter inches and weighs weighs in at a sizable 6.8 ounces. Ever since the release of Superman the Infected, a number of collectors were hoping that McFarlane would make a regular Superman using this mold. They'll keep doing side-eye even though they know we hate it, but this? Oh, this they'll give us. From the top, and it's the same head as Action Comics 1000. The main detailing on this one, however, is a lot more heavy-handed. He kind of reminds me of that scene from Batman v Superman when he was hanging out in space half-dead after the nuclear blast. And based on his oversized proportions, he also kind of reminds Reminds me of that SNL skit where The Rock played Superman, and he was so ridiculously big that his costume was peeking out of the Clark Kent suit. One thing I will say is that I like the metallic red that they used. I actually like the color scheme in general. Flipping them around, then this is a pretty good shade of red for the cape. Another thing that I do actually appreciate about this version is the fact that he has fists instead of open hands. But one thing that baffles me is the trunks. Strictly speaking, Rebirth Superman isn't supposed to have trunks, and yet the wrinkles make it very clear that this is a pair of underoos on the outside of his costume. If you're gonna give him the outside underwear anyway, you might as well do this. But then we get down to the boots, and of course this is the thing that most people talk about, and let's be honest, this is absolutely unforgivable. Fun fact, Mego actually did the same thing with their Pocket Heroes Batman, very obviously painting Batman scallops over Superman's boots. So then, how does our Challenger compare? From the top, and I think this head is very ugly, but I mean that in the best possible way. It's an intentionally ugly story that shows the ugliness of people. Everyone, Superman included, is an over-the-top caricature. I look at this face and it does track from what I remember in the comic. Similarly, the proportions are sufficiently larger than life, and the logo is a pretty faithful recreation of what we saw from the graphic novel. That said, I thought that he had the yellow S on the back of the cape in that comic, but maybe Maybe I'm misremembering. Either way, it's sculpted very nicely, and the colors are bright and sufficiently Superman-y. The wrist balls have been painted flesh toned to help them blend in better. That's one thing the Rebirth version didn't do. And the thickness of his legs do a very good job of hiding the ankle balls. If I had only one criticism, just like the Rebirth version, it would also be paint related. Why oh why are the belt loops yellow? Zooming into the tiny, tiny picture on the back of the box, and they're left unpainted here too. And in that aspect, it kind of reminds me of the DC Essential Superman. He might be a butterface but he's a much better adaptation of his source material than this. Ugh. For presentation, I'm giving it to the Dark Knight Returns. Moving on to posability, and both figures have dumbbell joints in the neck. They can look up this much, Dark Knight Returns clearly more so, and they can look down this much. Both of them have swivel hinge shoulders that raise up 90 degrees, and both of them have the McFarlane rotator cuff. And here is where the two diverge. Whereas Rebirth Superman has bicep swivel and double jointed elbows, Dark Knight Returns has no bicep swivel and has single jointed swivel elbows. Moving on down though, and both of them have diaphragm joints and dumbbell waists.
Ghosts. Using both their head and torso articulation, and here are the flying poses you can get them in. Dark Knight Returns definitely has the edge here. Below the waist, they both have McFarlane-style hips, a bit of swivel, double-jointed knees, and McFarlane ankle balls that swivel, hinge, and pivot. Additionally, both of them have toe articulation, but Dark Knight Returns has detents to help them stay in place. The range on the Dark Knight Returns Superman is very impressive, and I do think that some of the articulation points are better integrated into the sculpt. Unfortunately, Rebirth Superman's bicep swivel and double-jointed elbows win the round. For posability, I'm giving it to Rebirth. Moving on to playability, and Rebirth Superman comes with a trading card. Pause here if you want to read it. He also comes with a flight stand. Dark Knight Returns Superman comes with a trading card and a regular figure stand. And here we can finally get a decent look at the picture. If you want to read what that one says, pause here. He also comes with a pair of open hands and a snack. I mean build a figure pieces. I'm a Superman with a super appetite. <laughs> But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. For a DC Multiverse Superman comparison, here they are with Action Comics 1000. Seeing them all lined up in this one is still my favorite. Next up is Superman the Infected. This, of course, shares the same base body as the new Rebirth. I still don't think this is a good body for a regular Superman, but I will say that the red trunks and boots do help to balance it out. And for one more DC Multiverse Superman comparison, here they are with Cavill. Moving away from McFarlane, and here we have Superman from DC Essentials. Again, him and the Dark Knight Returns Superman have matching belts. Here's the new 52 Superman by DC Collectibles. This costume, of course, came one step before the Rebirth design. And speaking of Rebirth, here's the Rebirth Superman from DC Icons. For another 6-inch Superman comparison, here's DC Universe Classics by Mattel. For an overly wrinkled but with a metallic logo comparison, here they are with the Lieber Mayho Superman from the DC Designer series. But for the most important Superman of all, here they are with the Superpowers by Kenner. For a villain comparison, here they are with Lex Luthor. Here they are with Super Boy Prime. Next up, here they are with Bizarro, and here they are with Reverse Flash. This, of course, is the same body as the regular Flash, so if you're curious, this is how they'd scale with him. But if, like me, you prefer the DC Essentials Flash, well, here you go. And speaking of Justice League alumni, here they are with the Last Night on Earth Wonder Woman, here they are with the DC Essentials Wonder Woman, and Wonder Woman from the New 52. For Superman's greatest ally, or greatest rival in the case of the Dark Knight Returns, here they are with Batman. This one is the DC Rebirth Battle Damage version. Here's the Rebirth version from DC Essentials, and the big one, here they are with Batman from the Three Jokers. As you can see, he's out of the box, which can only mean that the review is coming very soon. If you need any other proof as to why this Superman doesn't work, just look here. Not only is Batman taller, which should absolutely not happen, but just look at how much wider Superman is. Honestly, he just looks silly. For a relative scale comparison, here they are with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and of course, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. One thing that I'm curious to see, and I'm sure some of you are too, are head swaps. First up, here's the Dark Knight Returns head on the Rebirth body, and yikes! This thing looks like the ugly tree was hit with it! This, on the other hand, has some potential. Oh, don't get me wrong, the head's still small for the body, but the thicker legs and the shorter torso kind of make it balance out better. To me, this kind of looks like Action Comics 1000 Superman juiced up on Venom. On that subject, here he is with Batman, and now they're the same height. Here's a kind of sort of makeshift Justice League, and yeah, Tell me what you think in the comments. If you're curious, here he is with Lex Luthor and Superboy Prime, and here he is with Bizarro. If you're a fan of The Dark Knight Returns, there's an entire wave that you can display this figure with. If not, this figure is simply too unique to mix and match with a general DC collection. Even though I like The Dark Knight Returns figure better, this one simply has more display options. For playability, I'm giving it to Rebirth. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. As a single-carded figure, Rebirth Superman retails for $20, Dark Knight Returns however, is part of a Build-A-Wave, so it retails for $25. If you're looking to build the horse, that's fine. If not, there's a Batman vs. Superman 2-pack coming out for only $40. For price, I'm giving it to Rebirth Superman, who wins the day at 4 out of 5. I'm gonna be honest, I went into this review kinda hating both of these figures and just sort of wanting to make fun of them. While neither one of them is perfect, as the review went on, I actually found a lot of things to like and admire. If you can only afford one and you just want a basic Superman figure for your display, Rebirth is absolutely the way to go, but there's definitely room for both of them in any Superman collection. I hope you've enjoyed this battle between two different Superman figures. This was a bit of an experiment for me, so please let me know in the comments if you want to see more Versus videos like this, and if you did like it, please do me a favor and give it a like. It really does help. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.